better. This is the Keith Larson Show on News Talk 1110 WBT. Night after night, sold-out crowds respond to the Carolina chocolate drops with passion and high energy. This collective enthusiasm is part of a celebrated rebirth, acknowledging the age-old beginnings of early down-home rhythms. Groups like this are among those resurrecting a forgotten tradition introduced by many unsung African Americans. Performers who are now giving life to a style that many black entertainers distanced themselves from and just allowed to wither on the vine. Well, I'll tell you, it's been a little while. They've been here a few times. Love to have the chocolate drops back in the studio. So give them a holler, Mark. Uh, but that's just one part of this story. They're a, they're a part and a cool and important part of this story, but they're just one part. This isn't just about them. This is Sojourn of the Strings is the name of it. And for all that we kid around with Steve Crump, you know, it's like, it, I, I really feel like, okay, hold on to the steering wheel and uh, don't wait for, for an earthquake or anything. When I uh, have to say, I, this is a great show. I really dug this. Uh, when I uh, popped this in, I had checked out, as honestly I usually do. You know, you got a new thing coming up. You give me the rough cut. And I pop it in, scan a little bit. Yeah, come on in, uh, talk a little bit. I popped this baby in for a second time last night. And uh, I just I couldn't walk away from it. Watch the whole thing. This is a really great piece of work. Thank you. This is really, uh, Thank you. really, really excellent there, Mr. Crump. And I'm even watching in the rough cut. You know, I don't have the graphics and, right. and, the, <laughs> and, and the sound is uneven. It, you know, sure, I mean, it's sure. not, it's it's not the mix, final, yeah. final version. Right. Yeah. But it was still terrific, and uh, I, w- I, wanted to, uh, I want you to tell me about it, uh, and also this sort of really interesting inside-out series of twists on the stringed instruments and the music and the Appalachian music and the banjo music and the bluegrass that it becomes, and so, that so many of us really dig, and the inside-out kind of twisted-around tale uh, of how it came here and whose it is and who abandoned it, uh, who felt that it was taken <laughs> right. away from, who's reviving it. That's what, you know, inst- reviving, if not the music, but the tradition and the grabbing onto the music. That's the Carolina Chocolate Drops. And uh, it's Sojourn of the Strings here, the latest documentary effort from Steve Crump. Let me just mention this. I have a follow-up genius email from the genius email I read just before the news from the guy, do I give 10% on the taxes? I'll get to that coming up in a little bit. It's like... And this, you know how sequels aren't always as good as the original? This sequel is as genius as his Do I Give 10%, you know, for like in response to that I don't like that government takes, you know, a quarter or a third of what you earn. Just automatically has a right to it. So we have a genius email follow-up from whoever this guy is. So we'll get to that. Um, when does it, there's a release party, kind of, of yeah. some sort for this tonight? Tonight, please, come, you, anyone, bring as many people as you want. Where uh, is it and when is it? It's going to be at the brand spanking new Mint Museum downtown uh, at the uh, cultural campus on uh, Tryon Street. There is a reception at 6.30, and we play the video around 7 o'clock this evening. And it's what, when it's uh, full out, an hour? Or, yeah, uh, f- 56.46, that's the, <laughs> that's the, uh, the, but who's the, the, the PBS hour, you know? So it's an hour, Yeah, uh, and then it'll be airing? Yeah, it's going to air uh, twice next week, uh, Monday at 9 on WTVI, and the following Wednesday, the night before Thanksgiving. This is Sojourn of the Strings is, and I'm going to be uh, very simplified, but it's, okay, this, this banjo music, this stringed instrument music that so many of us dig so much, whether you call it Appalachian, Mountain, whether you call it Bluegrass, I Piedmont, mean, whatever, yeah. Piedmont, whatever right. form it ultimately takes. And it's so much a part of around here, and it's been so much a part of, uh, of me and my taste and interest forever. And so to be here, so it's, it's the Bluegrass, it's the stringed instrument music, and it's the story of 
from whence it came, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. Africa Correct. is from where it came. But it's not even just that, because some people uh, you know, know that, I think. But it's from whence it came, Africa, and then it comes here, and then it gets some degree of picked up, sure, adopted, adapted, co-opted, true, twisted, yes, by white Europeans who found the profit in minstrelsy, who found the whole level of being able to, uh, uh, you know, exploit people and, and their talents. And, and what's really sad is, and, and in all due respect, I don't think we pull any punches or we try to out anybody in a malicious way, but it was what it was. And we were pretty soft in some of the stuff that we found going back to the depictions and the titles of songs and, you know, the way that uh, African Americans from that era were portrayed. It was in a very unfavorable light, uh, totally. despite, despite the talent, you know? And it's, and it's the minstrel thing. It's the blackface thing. It's the, you know, I mean, it's the, come on, boy, play us the two. I mean, that's what that was, right? That's, that's what that was, the minstrel, and you show it and you play it. And so that music, uh, that co-opting and, and that uh, twisting and making fun of uh, the African American or or the black uh, person person's culture, as a part of it. But what happened, and this is sort of the inside out, is part of what happened is that it was the banjo itself or the stringed instruments mm -hmm. themselves that, in many ways, got sort of abandoned by African Americans because of shame. Yes, because of the 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 shame and the hatred over the minstrel kind of d depiction. And, and so what happens is they let go of their own musical heritage and, and possession, and it becomes almost, you know, uh, the banjo within black uh, culture for decades and decades is like persona non grata. And what is amazing, you talk about the uh, Carolina Chocolate Drops, there's another group called the Ebony Hillbillies. Yeah. And uh, their founder is a fiddle player. They're out of New York. His name is Enrique Prince. And he basically says, I guess, uh, two-thirds into the in, into the piece, it's like, look, you know, people will come to our events and say, shouldn't you be ashamed of this thing? Shouldn't you, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, cast this thing, this banjo, these, these string instruments away? And he says, absolutely not, because this is something that we brought here and we embrace, and it's a beautiful part of our musical culture. I, it was uh, it, it, it's fantastic and fascinating, and where you go in the story and the people that you have in it. I mean, you, you're showing and you show the history of these instruments, where they came mm -hmm. from, what they emanated from, uh, the gourd exactly. uh, instruments. The ngoni is what they call it over there. And you have people here today in our uh, Blue Ridge areas who mm -hmm. are still making and preserving instruments in that way. You have some of that. You have uh, Bella Fleck. Uh, is in this. I mean, what it's, a kick. I mean, yeah, he, yeah, he, exactly. he's the king. Oh, he is. And, and, and the interesting thing about Bela or Bella, depending on, on what you want to call him, and, and, and I've listened to him for years, you know, for decades, to be quite honest. And one of the things that he really did that kind of opened this whole scenario and this dialogue up, uh, he produced a documentary uh, and won a Grammy for the follow-up uh, CD called Throw Down Your Heart where he went to four countries in Africa. But what, something I found rather interesting, and uh, you know, maybe your listeners can be the judge of this, because if you do a Google, you'll see the promo trailer you know, on uh, WTVI's website, or if you do it on YouTube. But the point is, on some of the banjo hangout um, uh, forums, there are people that are just absolutely mortified at what, at what Bela said from the standpoint of, he makes a point, he says, you know, Understanding what we just discussed here, Keith, he said, I would be offended if someone stole something from me. Mm -hmm. And 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 there are some folks, you know, and from one of the um, uh, banjo artists that we had interviewed, he had told me, he said, a lot, of, a lot of the blowback is coming from people in the bluegrass crowd, the bluegrass music crowd, who had no idea that this instrument came from across those shores, was imported with slaves, and, you know, and, 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 and in many regards, as you said, co-opted and ripped off. Well, but, I mean, why should they be upset to know if that's the true path and course that this uh, instrument and this type music and these instruments took? It, it's, it's not someone's fault today if they happen to be a fan of that music or they're playing a banjo. It's not their fault for 150 years ago. But to recognize and know that that's the reality of the path, that would be like saying... 
that that uh, black performers, R and B performers, weren't ripped off in in the twenties, thirties, forties, and fifties sure, musically, sixties, sure. and, and as you well see some of that by, in the, this by the music industry. Right. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. that's the way it was. Certainly, absolutely, you know, and and the advent of race records, but yeah, you know, there's and you've got that in this right, too, the right, race right, records right. And, there's some connectivity to all, and that. in addition to uh, uh, Mr. Fleck, you sit down with Pete Seeger. What a cool moment in my life <laughs> steve crump sits down with pete seeger i can show you the pictures i i thought of a phrase to, to describe it i would call that insatiably cool yeah you know and going back to you know pete seeger and the civil rights movement and it was it was it was it was the late harry chapin who i met twice that uh turned me on to pete seeger uh in terms of activism uh, roles in music and what was really amazing about sitting at Pete's uh, living room in New York, uh, you know, he's just so unassuming. Driving up to his home, listen to Crump, listen to Crump, <laughs> How, house dropping. Yeah, right. I'm in Pete Seeger's living room in New York. Yeah, well, no, 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 but this is a true story. So we drive to his house and you see this big red barn. It's the same barn that you see in the in the Bruce Springsteen documentary. So there's this guy in this in this flannel barn jacket and a red toboggan stacking firewood, and it's Pete Seeger, and he knew that I was coming. So you know. We we got to hang out, and, and he's he, stacking firewood. He is stacking. He's like a hundred years old. He's ninety-one, as I said. <laughs> yeah. But what was fun about that? Even after we got done with the interview, and you know, we're just telling war stories, and he's telling stories about how Woody Guthrie started a fight in Baltimore over some race issue in the nineteen forties. <laughs> but to see, I got to hang out with Pete Seeger in his kitchen as he and his wife were doing dishes. So Listen, you know, just regular people. I want to play one more clip. I sure. can't remember this guy's name, right. but it's just. Just another example of, of some of the great insight and fun and learning that, that's in this documentary that Steve did. This is a guy, I don't think he's with Hap, uh, but, but he's a genius on the uh, stringed instruments. And he's talking about the R&B influence that also comes uh, from African Americans, from uh, black music, and gets imputed and pulled into the banjo. And when you hear him do this... I just thought this was really cool uh, to listen and think about. You take it for granted as a certain kind of way that, that bluegrass and banjo sounds. But he explains what's really going on there. Do you have that clip, Mark? I hope it's the right one. Just play this clip. You know, the African-American influence was so, I think, so rhythmic and so powerful. And those, you add those blues notes. Man, you got something happening there. Uh, you know, that wasn't in the English, Scottish, and Irish music. That wasn't in there. And when people begin to add those sliding sounds, those those funky, great sounds that make it what it is, to make it American music, you know, to make it this blending of African-American and English, Scotch, and Irish music, then it gets a hybrid power that's just out of this world. <laughs> Isn't that something, though? I mean, to hear that, and you hear that typical bluegrass slide or twang in oh, there, yeah. but it's like, no, that's the blues on a banjo twanging. I had to listen to that sound bite probably uh, 20 times over and over. Uh, in fact, uh, Travis Washington, uh, who's a co-producer on this project. Who, Travis did this with yeah, you? Yeah, Travis. Oh, and I did, yeah, yeah, who you know Molly speaks highly of, and uh, Travis uh, and I were joined at the hip on this one. But that's David Holt, uh, who's from Asheville, who may be at the screening tonight. He sent me an email and said that he may try to come uh, to the event at the Mint tonight uh, at uh, 630. And what Holt basically you know, says is, I mean, you know, he came here from California, Texas boy, but came from California, but learned so many of the influences from people like Etta Baker, from Joe and Odell Thompson. And uh, he's, you know, pays reverence and respect to the innovations of these folks who were on the ground floor of this. Well, I'll just tell you what, if you dig the music, and by music, I mean, if you call it bluegrass, call it stringed instrument, uh, Piedmont, Appalachia, you know, it all it all gets uh, pooled in there like some big stew. And it's so much a part of this area and the heritage and even the nature of some of the music, this Certainly. radio station as well. Uh, you got to uh, check out Steve's documentary, Sojourn of the Strings. This party is tonight at the Mint at what time? It, uh, the uh, reception is at 630, 6.30, free, free of charge. Uh, we'll show the video around 7, but would love to have everybody down. And uh, it'll it'll air on WTVI this coming Monday night at nine, and again the night before Thanksgiving. Um, 
Not a creature was, no. <laughs> night before Thanksgiving, 8 o'clock, wow. Wednesday night. I'll be interested to see the final smoothed out, you know, version with the Which we finished at 11.53 last there night, I go. might add. In, yeah. in plenty of time. Yeah. Uh, but, Steve, seriously, a really, really great piece of work. And if you dig the music at all, you'll want to check this out. So, uh, thanks. Great. Thanks for having me, Keith. And, Mark? Have the gang back, the uh, chocolate trucks. Yeah, they're here December the 10th, and I'll, and I'll work on that for you. Love to. Uh, well, we've had them here several times, yeah. and uh, love to have them back. Always a kick, really. Um, I didn't know that she, I guess I didn't realize that she. Rhiannon? I, yeah, Rhiannon. <laughs> did that, did that know, freak you out? The, the, uh, the opera? Yes. <laughs> we, we always marvel at her voice and what she can do when she's yes, in here singing. exactly. We always marvel. Well, she's classic opera training. She's had an opera. She uh, went to school at Oberlin. Recording out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she it, went to Oberlin. I mean, she's it's really she's something. highbrow in terms of she understanding, is. you know, ethnomusicology. Well, uh, great work, Steve. Thank you. Uh.